Lieutenant Dina McFadden from the 54th Helicopter Squadron. I would like to welcome everyone to the 2021 International Women's Day celebration. It's wonderful to see so many people gathered in support of one another and in celebration of the accomplishments of the women in our organization. We are honored to have the following distinguished guests with us here today. Commander, 91st Missile Wing, Colonel Chris Menway and his spouse, Tanya. And Command Chief, 91st Missile Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Garrett Langston and his spouse, Sue. We would like, also like to welcome all families and members of Team Minot. In 1908, 15,000 women marched through New York City demanding shorter working hours, better pay, and the right to vote. What started as a rally would soon become a movement. Just two years later, at the International Conference of Working Women, 100 women from 17 countries voted to establish an International Women's Day. The first recorded celebration was held in Austria, Germany, and Switzerland in 1911. Today marks the 110th anniversary of International Women's Day. From the Revolutionary War to today, women have fought for the United States in every major conflict. Though not always recognized, women served vital roles in support, espionage, and even combat. In 1948, Congress passed the Women's Armed Services Integration Act, which established women as a permanent part of the military. That same year, Esther Blake became the first woman to enter active duty service in the United States Air Force. It wasn't until 2016 that all military roles were officially open to women. Today, the Air Force is comprised of approximately 20% women, a percentage that is climbing every year. These dates and milestones are a reminder that our freedoms and rights have been hard earned. While women have made tremendous strides, we still have a long ways to go. Our former First Lady, Michelle Obama, once said, there is no limit to what we as women can accomplish. It is so vital that we form close bonds, seek mentorship and friendship amongst ourselves, because as a unit, we are stronger. With that goal in mind, it is important that we remember the legacy of the past, the triumphs of the present, and our hopes for the future. Before we hear from our incredible guest speakers today, please direct your attention to the video screen as the founder of Air Force Global Strike Command's celebration of International Women's Day, Brigadier General, General uh, Stacy Hoosier, provides opening remarks. Hello from Washington, D.C. For... I'm Stacey Huger. Uh, thank you for asking me to be a small part of this special day. It's such an honor for me, and special thanks to my dear friend, Colonel Nemish, for asking me to do this. I've known Colonel Nemish for a long time, and I have enjoyed watching her many career successes and her, her beautiful family, and am just a huge fan. She inspires me all the time. So thank you all for letting me be here with you in this way today. Um, you know, when I first joined the Air Force, I know this sounds terrible, but I did not really care about women's representation in the military, in ICBMs, in the Air Force. I didn't care. I was perfectly happy being the only woman in the room or the first woman who, you know, insert whatever here or, you know, the, the first woman leading a, an effort. I, that was a source of pride for me, and that it really didn't bother me. I didn't care. But about 10 years in, something in me changed. And I don't know if it was maturing. I don't know if it was having my eyes open or if it was having children. But something in me changed, and I got mad. I got mad when I was the only woman in the room. Or I got mad when people would say, well, you're the first woman who. I, so where, where are the women? Why aren't they here? Where's our pool of women who should be with me, who should be sitting around this table with me, who should be in these amazing leadership positions? Where are they? 
And ever since then, I, I've been passionate about women serving in the military, in particular in the Air Force, and in particular in ICBMs, female missileers. Um, so, so that's where my heart lies. In 2015, I got to be the operations group commander there at Minot. And I was in pre-departure one day when we all used to gather together for pre-departure. And about a third of the people going on alert were women. And I was amazed because when I was on crew, we didn't have that many women. And at the same time I was realizing this, women all over the group were realizing the same thing. And the idea of the all women's alert was born. Um, so people will say it was my idea, and, but it wasn't. It, it was this collective idea that all just came out at once from a variety of people. But, you know, as soon as we said the words, all women's alert, the trolls came out, and, and you guys know who these people are. But they came out and said, well, when is the all men's alert? And, you know, when is this and when is that? And, you know, why can't we just celebrate the best person? And why can't you just be good at your job? And, and so I sat down with my squadron commanders who were all four men, male squadron commanders, and I said, never mind, we're, we can't do this. The, the comments are already too ugly. I give up. And it was them who said, no, this is important. We need to do this. And it was these four gentlemen who said, and we should do it in March in honor of Women's History Month. So that's how the idea came to be. So for the men in the room, I just want to emphasize how important it is for you and your participation and, and you being an ally and an advocate for women. So thank you and thank you for being a part of this special day. So the All Women's Alert was born. Um, I reached out to the other two operations group and they joined in. I reached out to the bomb wing, so they flew female crews that day. The 625th Stops flew female crew. Our awesome public affairs team at Minot had an all women's team covering the event. It was just huge and I thought, you know, this is great and my, my dream was just to do this one event and be done. At the time, I had no plans for this to become an annual event, and look what it is today. It's just amazing, and I have a friend who always makes sure that I get the patches every year, and it's just incredible to see what the Women's Alert has become. And, you know, when we started the Women's Alert, it was, you know, to honor the women who came before us. You know, we stand on the shoulders of giants, right? So it was to honor them, and it was to hopefully inspire a future generation. It was to inspire the women who were watching, the women in high school and college, the, the younger women who would see it on social media, and for them to say, I think I can do that too. It was to reach out to those women and to pull them in. But I want you guys to remember the, the women who are there, who are serving right now, you know, whether you're active duty, whether you're civilian, that I hope you use Women's Day to also celebrate you. The women we have now are the most intelligent, courageous, authentic, inclusive, diverse group of women that I have ever seen and totally inspiring. I mean, you, you relish in your uniqueness, you're brave, you're unapologetic for who you are, you, and you also relish in your unity, and you know that you're stronger together, you support each other, you look out for each other, you lift each other up. It's just amazing, and I know it's not easy. I've been lucky because I've had a spouse who's been perfectly happy being a stay-at-home dad, but we don't all have that. We have single moms, we have moms with babies, we have moms with kids making college decisions, we have same-sex marriages and partnerships, we have women of color who are, are living in areas where people don't look like them. And we have everything. We have, we have women whose spouses and partners have very important careers of their own that they want to pursue. So it's not easy. It's, it's freaking hard. So I want to thank you guys. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little choked up. I want to thank you guys for doing it, for killing it every day like you are. So celebrate you. Yeah, it's great to celebrate the women that came before us, but 
you know, you guys are writing history right now, and my daughters are going to be celebrating. They're going to be celebrating you because you guys are inspiring them. You're paving the way. You're the ones who are showing them that there, there's no limits to what they can do. Being a leader in the military is perfectly normal for them because they see you guys doing it. And so thank you. Um, thank you all. Thank you again for letting me be just a small part of your special day. This is so incredible. I'm so happy that you're doing this. I'm so happy that our All Women's Alert turned into so much more. And, and just a celebration of women. So thank you. Please keep being you. Please keep inspiring people like me and my children. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Wow, what a what an incredible way to start this. I know I needed to hear that today. Um, and, and now it is my pleasure to introduce to you the guest speakers for today's panel. I would like to thank each of them for taking the time out of their busy schedules to attend this event and provide their valuable insight and perspective with us. Up first, we have First Lieutenant Savannah Lee. She is the Resources Flight Commander in the 791st Maintenance Squadron. She commissioned from Auburn University ROTC in 2017. After graduating, Lieutenant Wheat moved to Washington, D.C. to work for the Air Force Association. Since arriving at Minot Air Force Base in September of 2017, the Alabama native has served as a shop OIC, a group executive officer, and a flight commander. Lieutenant Wheat has been a member of the Air Force Women's Initiative team since 2019 and has served as a civilian sexual assault and rape victim advocate and counselor for four years in college. Up next, we have Chief Master Sergeant Miranda Minshew. She serves as the Career Assistance Advisor, 5th Support Squadron. She is the Senior Career Advisor for 5,600 active duty personnel. She generates force development across all tiers of enlisted and officer ranks, establishing local education needs through direct collaborative efforts with professional military education and installation senior leaders. A native of Arthur, Nebraska, Chief Master Sergeant Minshew enlisted in the Air Force in October of 1998. She has served in a variety of positions within the public health career field and served in two development, development special duty positions. Sergeant Minshew has deployed in support of Operations Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom. And lastly, we have Technical Sergeant Jennifer Turner. She is the Missile Maintenance Team Chief for the 91st Missile Maintenance Squadron. Originally from Virginia Beach, Sergeant Turner cross-trained from Air Traffic Control Landing Systems to Missile and Space Maintenance Systems under the n Corps program in 2019. In her time in the Air Force, she has witnessed her first AFSC evolve from a communications squadron to an operations squadron, which then merged with ground radar into airfield systems to form Radar Airfield Weather Systems, or RAWS. Her husband is also enlisted within the 91st, and she is the mother of two, a son, Drew, five, and a daughter, Blake, three. Welcome. I will lead off with some questions, and then after that, I will open it up to the audience. Please raise your hand and wait to be acknowledged, then stand and ask your question loudly so everyone can hear. I'll start off. Uh, what advice do you all have for young leaders in And you're like, oh, like, we don't want to do this. Like, 
But it's gotta be done, right? Your willingness and your attitude to just get after it. Find the problems and fix them, right? Don't be looking at somebody else to fix the things that you find. Do it for yourself. Absolutely. Um, I can echo both of those. I'll just add, uh, be bold. There are definitely going to be times uh, that you are given challenges that you feel are out of your scope. Um, for example, like being on a, a Women's Day panel, I think I've asked myself <laughs> about eight times today, what, how, why am I qualified to be here? Um, but we're, we're taking a bold leap and we're here anyways, chatting with you guys. Um, there's going to be many things that you're going to face in life and work, um, so be bold. Thank you. And next question, what are the most important characteristics of a leader to you? <laughs> I guess one of the most important characteristics I like to, from leaders I've had in the past and like, um, what I like to keep with my airmen is honesty. A lot of people don't know how to be honest with each other. And if you have honesty up and down the ranks and in real life, like if you have children, honest with your children, honest with your spouse, honest with your friends, I think you're going to get more out of the relationship, whether it be at work or in your personal life. So definitely honesty is one of my big ones. Well, Sergeant Turner took my answer, so I should go first with that one. I honestly would say caring, like empathy, caring, like feeling for other people, um, understanding where they're coming from. I remember the very first like leader I had that she honestly 100% cared about who I was, right, and what, where we were going to go in the next steps of things. But really, just caring. It was, it was definitely changed how I approached leadership and mentorship and friendship and probably just even my family life. Um, I'll go ahead and. Quote, probably misquote uh, the live action Cinderella that came out a few years ago. Uh, and they said, the quote was, have courage and be kind. Um, I'm going to add, also be genuine to that. So have courage, be kind, be genuine. I think that's uh, all you can do as, as a leader of people. That is really good advice. Um, I will open up the questions to the audience. Uh, if you have a question, just raise your hand. Concert room's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any mentors or um, coaches along the way that stood out that uh, shared experiences with you to help uh, uh, holding you to lead? You're making eye contact with me, sir. I'll start. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I've, I've been very blessed to have many mentors, um, not very many female mentors, I'll, I'll be honest about that. Um, most of the female mentorship I think that I've come across in the Air Force has actually been from my airmen. Um, they were the ones that actually pushed me and inspired me to join the Women's Initiative team uh, because very much so, um, like the Brigadier General said, um, I was not someone that really felt out of place being the only female in a room. Um, and it was my female airman that actually pushed me and said, like, no, you're you're actually one of our only female leaders we have in the group. Like, we're watching you. And it's like, oh, okay, I guess I need to start start uh, acting the part or, um, you know, looking to be the female leader that I guess I didn't technically have. So, um, as a Lieutenant McFadden said, I've been in since 1998. <laughs> That's a very long time. So. Mentors, I've had a ton of them, um, and I would actually pose this question, or kind of a question like it, to uh, Master Sergeant Rose. She's the ALS commandant. We were talking about it, and and I said, "Do you have a lot of female mentors?" I I said, "I don't feel like I do." And she's like, "You know, she's like, I never really felt like I did either until she said she got a text message from um, one of her friends, and it said, "Hey, mentors," and she's like, "Wait, I thought we were just like friends." <laughs> And then I started thinking about that, right? Like, I just call them my tribe, right? Like, like my group of empowered women that I have that I just thought were my friends, but really, I like Sergeant Rose. I went to her to discuss this panel because, you know, I like brainstorm a little bit before I think of these things. But I was like, she mentors me, 
right? Senior Raymond sitting right over there, she mentors me. Um, Sergeant Watson over on the 91st side, she's a cop, like she mentors me. Sergeant Brown, like I have a full list of women here that mentor me every day. And I think sometimes when you have mentors, when you think about that word, a lot of times those are just my friends. Um, but I garner something from them whenever I need to grow, I turn to them for those things. <laughs> I'm a first time trying to go with a female mentor that I've had in the military curriculum. I've had, I've come from two different maintenance type curriculums where it's very male dominant. I'm usually the only one in the, in the shop. So I, I've had a lot of great male mentors that I don't know if they saw something in me and they're just like, they give me something and then I take off with it. Or that way, so I, I guess I have a lot of male mentors, but the one female mentor sticking out in my head would be my stepmother, and she's the tired baby. So she definitely gave me a little bit more guidance of, you know, females in the military and that kind of thing.
so I was afraid to be a female in maintenance. Um, I love, my favorite color is pink. Um, all of my water bottles are, like everything now, there's no question about it. Like I'm, I am the girly girl in the room, um, but you know, I can, I can put the boxing gloves on when they need to be, but I didn't know how to do that at first. And it took somebody being brave and saying, kind of what I was saying earlier, is be genuine, be yourself, because we see right through it. Um, so that was, I, I'd call it one uh, reality check. I don't know if you want to call it turning point, but um, I'm, I feel a lot better now. My first year was definitely a struggle because I was trying to be something that I thought the Air Force wanted me to be. Turns out they uh, love me for being me. So <laughs> it was a nice surprise. I think your hand first. What is a challenging experience that you had to overcome and how did you overcome it? Yeah, again, it was frustrating. Most challenge moment, um, again, it comes down to humbling. You know, I, I, get, I come from like about to be in charge of uh, take control of a shop and then here I am sweeping because that's what they wanted me to do at the time. So that was definitely challenging for me. I kind of like swallowed my pride a little bit. But again, I think it also kind of built me up to be a better leader to see at different points um, perspective, in a sense, um, and more respect for what our women do every day, especially in the missile field. Even as simple as just sweeping rocks out of the way so a launcher closure door can like open without a whim and without any issues, it's important to do that. And now I see that. So I, I did that with them. Um, yeah, definitely got more respect for them, but that was definitely something. Um, yeah, I've, I've got one, and it's actually something I'm still working through now. Um, but I was in a pretty severe car wreck, uh, which happened years and years ago, but I'm still dealing with um, the physical and mental effects from that. And so it was finally admitting to myself that I was not handling it well. Um, and knowing that there was a possibility it could affect my PRP, my career. Um, so just having, uh, I have a theme, if you haven't <laughs> noticed, but having the courage to say, um, to lean on somebody else and say, I'm, I'm gonna get help for this because I think it'll make me better in the long run. So. Like I said, still navigating it, but uh, so far so good. I'm still sitting here, still on PRP, so. <laughs> so for me, my challenging moment, um, before I came here, I was at Interlick. Um, I was non-involved um, and got to go by myself without, because I'm also married um, and I have a young daughter. Um, and I said, he just retired, so at the time he was active duty and I, and I had to go alone. Um, and so, I, when I was there, like the coup happened, we meowed out the families, like it was just, it was, it was tough. It was a really, really tough time. Um, and then, because I did such a great job there, um, I got to come to Minot, right? Um, and so my husband's like, you're, you're taking me back to North Dakota. I said, you're welcome. Um, and so we got here in the dead of winter, right? Like, and it was when it, that year that we had like 700 feet of snow and he's like, why, why, are we, why are we here? Like, why is all this happening? And, and we spent 15 months apart, right? So I get here, and, you know, just like military, they just keep, you know, what's the next thing, next thing, they just keep moving, right? Um, and my marriage was falling apart, 100%. My daughter didn't know who I was. My husband and I, like, 15 months apart is a long time. And I had to go to my boss and say, because he just started giving me stuff. He's like, here you go, here's all these amazing opportunities for you to continue to advance and spend hours away from your family. I'm like, eh. like how about we stop for a second, right? Um, and I said, I have to take a knee. I, because when all of you guys are gone, they have to be there. Um, and it was the first time, and I've been in, um, at that point, I think I was at about 17 years, I had never said, I need to take care of me and my family. Never had I done it, and it was hard. And I cried my eyes out. And he said, how long do you need? And I said, six months. So he pulled up his calendar and counted six months. <laughs> and said that was the day he was gonna give me some stuff to do, right? But it took a lot of courage. Somebody I didn't know, and to be that vulnerable, 
Um, and him and I are still very, very close friends to this day. But that saved my marriage and probably advanced my career at the same time. College. I wasn't so sure I wanted to be a veterinarian anymore, and you know, college was it was approaching, and I knew um, that was something you know was very important to me and my family. So I knew I had to do something. Um, and the second thing the fire chief said was, "You were meant to do big things. You were given a second chance." Well, no pressure on a 17-year-old. Um, and so here I am now, a couple months later, wheeling around in my wheelchair and uh, senior in high school. And a Marine uh, started talking to my buddy who was pushing me, and he was in, uh, enlisting in the Marines. And he uh, started speaking to me, and he said, well, you know, that's the reason I joined the Marines. So I, had a, I had a bad accident. I recovered, and uh, that's what I decided to do. Well, I'm terrified of water, so Navy and Marines were out for me. Um, and it just, I started doing some research, and Air Force, Air Force was it. Um, my mother probably had a small heart attack the first time I told her. I don't think she believed it for a couple hours. Um, but here, here we are, and it is, um, you know, it's why I'm still here. I feel like I've finally found something that's very natural for me. Um, I love it. I wouldn't be doing anything else. So I joined, um, so I'm from a small town in Nebraska, and when I say small, like my not the metropolis. My high school graduating class was five people. So, like, legit a very, very small town, a lot, not, a, not a lot of opportunity. Um, and the recruiter just cold called me one day, said, hey, you want to join the Air Force? I said, sure! She's like, this never happens. So I was like, well, let's do this, right? Um, so it was kind of like I didn't have anything else to do on a Tuesday. And so I don't know if, and then along the way, right, like, you join for reasons that the recruiter tells you why to join, right? Like, I want school people, I want a paycheck, I want somewhere to live, I want to leave my parents' house, right? That obviously is not still the reason why I serve today, right? Eventually along the way, um, there's a point when you join and there's a point when you start to serve. And it was that time when the when the master sergeant said, said you're going places, like you're gonna be a chief one day. And that's when I flipped over and started to serve, um, serve the Air Force and serve my airmen. So the reason why I joined, um, I didn't exactly have a good home. I didn't have home stability. I was constantly living in my truck. I had a to-go bag in my truck. I used to go to the community center and take showers. It's quite humbling. <laughs> so the reason why I joined is to have a stable home and home life and also try to go to college. Um, I'm still here. I enjoy what I do. Um, I'm not college out of the water. I have four associate's degrees, one bachelor and one master's, and no college debt. So, and I have a house over my head. So I, mean, I love the Air Force and I love what I do. I do just want to add, that's such a great question to ask people. Everyone has a reason. Um, you know, it may be, you know, something as simple as I was bored, and then it may be, you know, someone's reason to completely change the, the path their life is going down. Um, take the time to ask people. That's, that really is a great question to ask people. Everyone has an answer. Wow, those were some really good words. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm kind of blown away by everyone here. Um, I just want to say thank you uh, for giving your time, for sharing with us, all, all taking, taking that. Um, to close the session out, because we are running out of time, um, we have some thoughts from Colonel, uh, 91st Wing Commander, Colonel Menway. Let's come up and share. Bullet! <laughs> Thank you, Colonel Menway. 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 Thank you, Colonel 
need to put on my glasses. The last time I didn't do this, I couldn't read my own handwriting on some of this stuff. So, all right. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you again so much uh, for coming to uh, today's celebration and leadership panel. Um, today is about celebrating and recognizing hard-fought victories, successes, and struggles of women uh, in our Air Force, our military, and our nation overall. Um, and today we had the privilege to hear from some awesome women uh, in our Air Force. So I do want to give a shout out to uh, Brigadier General Stacey Hoosier for her opening remarks. Um, and really not just for, for sharing her comments, but also for, for sharing her heart and passion and uh, really inspiring uh, all of us to, to live a life uh, that uh, shows dignity and respect for everybody. Um, and thank you to our panel, uh, panel members today. Uh, it's important to hear your experiences and your stories. Uh, and they, they do a couple of things. So one is to encourage women that are coming behind to empower them to, to see a path that's already been laid out. Uh, but also to, to help educate uh, all of us in, in how we can do a better job to improve and, and the things we're also you know, to be more authentic, uh, to be transparent, to lead, to be bold and courageous. Um, so thank you so much for your leadership and uh, being willing to sit up here today and answer some questions. Really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone who put on this celebration. Uh, what an awesome event. And it's important that we take time to do this. Uh, one of the posters I saw over at the BX uh, states, honor the past and secure the future. Um, and there are so many incredible accomplishments that uh, women have achieved throughout our history. Uh, but while it's important to remember those, it's really important to, to inspire and encourage action for today. And uh, also, as uh, the general mentioned, to celebrate you. I mean, it is about the present, um, the importance of this day to, to make sure that we continue to move forward, have a future mindset, and really to inspire that next generation, which is uh, what you guys are doing. Thanks so much. Um, and uh, you know, and also to make sure that, that stories like the, the generals of being the only woman in the room, that uh, being in, that it's commonplace to have women in leadership positions, it's important that that becomes the norm. So I want to challenge everyone here today to think about what Women's Day means to you. Um, to me, I think of the amazing uh, leaders that I've had the chance to work with who have also been women. Um, that uh, I've had amazing. Uh, courageous subordinates like uh, Major Melissa Urbanski and Captain Sheila Cole. I was going to bring uh, an object with me. Uh, this was a, I, I forgot it at home, but I was given a sign by one subordinate that said, uh, men to the left because women are always right. <laughs> um, and uh, and that was that was a, a humbling moment for me, which, which apparently I tended to maybe uh, argue and push back with uh, one of these subordinates that she felt uh, was maybe because of her being a woman. Um, and that, that really hit home for me. I'm like, crap, am I really doing that? I felt I'd do it with everybody. I mean, my wife would, would say so. But uh, <laughs> in either case, though, that, that, we, have, uh, that we can have mentorship uh, all around us, uh, whether it's a subordinate or otherwise. But peers like Colonel Kathy Barrington and Colonel Anita Fugate Opperman, or my former boss, uh, Colonel Jennifer Reeves, um, one of the best wing commanders that I've ever had the opportunity to work for. Uh, I also think of my mom. Uh, she enlisted, so to keep with the Navy thing, she enlisted in the Navy um, and ultimately retired as a sonar technician first class. Uh, but she was one of the inspirations for why I joined the military. Uh, but I relied on all of them for uh, guidance, advice, and mentorship. Um, and because of all of them, it encourages me, and, and seeing this here today, it encourages me that we're on the right trajectory uh, while also understanding and knowing that we still have work to do. So please take time uh, to think about how we can better support one another and create an environment uh, that feels like family uh, and that helps women flourish and succeed. And then after you think about it, go do it. Thanks again for coming today. Again, and uh, thank you for hosting this and making this possible. I especially want to thank uh, Lieutenant Kimberly Liu and Sergeant Daniel Ellis for leading this and to all of our volunteers for making it possible. As we end the session, I want to leave you with something. Tennis legend Serena Williams 
once said, every woman's success should be an inspiration to another. We're strongest when we cheer each other on. I challenge each of you to bring the spirit of Women's Day to your corner of the world, not just today, but every day. Thank you so much for coming and stay safe.